Welcome to Public Forum, a community outreach program produced at North Idaho College on the shores of Lake Coeur d'Alene. Featuring guests from around the globe addressing a wide variety of subjects, Public Forum serves to educate and enlighten. Please join host and moderator, political scientist Tony Stewart, in welcoming today's guest. Welcome to today's North Idaho College Public Forum. For the viewers who were not with us last week, we had a wonderful time and we weren't able to complete that and we we're finishing it this week. We have as our guest the author of The Adventures of Woodville, Oscar Meets the Duchess. It's a children's program. It's about animals and a conversation between animals. And our author of that book is Christy Wood. What we did last week, we had 15 of our residents of Coeur d'Alene to come and, and play the roles in, uh, of the different animals and speak uh, in the script that Christy Wood wrote. Uh, we're going to finish that this week uh, with those characters. And then I'm going to interview the author of this book, uh, Christy Wood. She is a sergeant with the Coeur d'Alene Police Department. Uh, she's on the Board of Trustees at North Idaho College, and she's also on the Board of Trustees of Coeur d'Alene School District. She's a very active person. She has time for her family. She has time to write books. And by the way, she's also a great cook. She does many, many things. And so she'll come back and explain where we left off last week, and we'll finish the book on the different roles of these animals, and then I shall interview her, and then we'll interview some of the individuals uh, who were here last week and did the different roles of the animals. It's a wonderful children's book, and it's a very different format for our program, but we're delighted to do this. And I bring back now to the mic um, Christy Wood. Thank you, Tony. Thank you for having me and my friends back on the show to read the book. Um, last week we left off with the animals had gone on a great adventure together. They met an ogre in the woods and the hero of the story, Oscar, um, kept the crew together, kept things going, and the ogre ended up being their friend, and he actually saved Oscar. Along the way, Oscar and Hannah fell in love, and Oscar proposed, and so we pick, off, pick up after he proposed. Hannah was overjoyed. Hannah knew that she and Oscar would live happily ever after at Woodville. I would be honored to be your bride. Hannah extended her hand to Oscar. Oscar took hold of her dainty hand and smiled. Come, we must tell everyone. Oscar and Hannah shared their news and all of Woodville were very happy. Plummy was especially overjoyed. This is indeed great news. Is there any chance Abigail will come visit from time to time? A gentleman such as I always enjoy the company of a lovely lady. Oscar smiled and said, I will extend the invitation. The next day, Hannah said goodbye to all of her friends. Be safe, Oscar, and return home soon. Oscar's intent was to ask her father's permission for her hand in marriage. Oscar and Hannah were off with Clark escorting them. The trip through the deep woods would be much safer and quicker than before. Soon they would be planning a large Woodville wedding. All of the animals were filled with joy. As they rode into the beautiful countryside, Oscar knew his life would be filled with much adventure and happiness. The end. What a wonderful story. Christy, if you'll just stay there, I'll sure. come over here to this mic and uh, we'll continue the interview. I found the book delightful and Thank I know you. last week our viewers got to hear most of it and finish this week and those individuals that you chose for the uh, role of different animals was wonderful. Yeah. Uh, Children's books are just delightful, and we have done a number of those over the years. And one of the people that's here today that played uh, a role of animals is my good friend Denise Clark, and we've done a lot of books with her and reading, and she can tell you that children's books are not only a delight for the children, but for the parents and others to read to them. Uh, I guess my first question is, uh, how did you come about uh, deciding to do this? And mm -hmm. I'm always intrigued with authors because uh, how you can come up with a storyline and, and go through yeah. the whole process is fascinating and I believe this is only one of uh, two or three books that you yeah wrote. well the next uh, book was the Woodville wedding of course they had to get married in a big big event and then I'm in the middle of uh, Christmas at Woodville it's the third in the series now our viewers don't know because that wonderful dog is not here yeah. today <laughs> but this is really about uh, your animals I know yeah we interviewed you some months ago and you grew up on uh, a farm, I guess, where you had lots of animals. I did. And so yeah. tell us more about Oscar. 
Well, Oscar's my little boy, my little pug dog that um, lives at home with me, as does Hannah, and my cat, Bogey, who's also in the story. Um, all of the other animals are from my childhood. All of them existed except for Jimmy the Skunk, and I named that character after my brother because <laughs> I thought we'd just fill that in with him. And um, the uh, every one of them was very important to me when I was a little kid. And um, when I tried to cast the characters for your show, I thought, well, who are people that I connect with? And not only that, their personality connects with this character. I'm very grateful to Denise for, for stepping in today. A little boy named Curtis was, had been practicing to play um, Oscar, and he came with, down with the flu today. So we're thrilled that Denise uh, stepped in. She did a fantastic job. She sure did, and she's very gifted. And we had have, we have two young people here today. I was yeah. so impressed with them. And one of them is still here. The other one, her and her yes. father had to leave. But uh, he just did this great, great job. Maybe we can bring back the little stool and he can get up to the mic. We'll, can we do that? Christy, we'll let you ask him some questions. He was just so good. Isn't he great? He's wonderful. And, and uh, you might ask him about how much he enjoyed doing this and uh, <laughs> who he is and his age. And Tony, this is my godson, Callan Langley. And he played my real son, Brian, in the book. And so I'm thrilled that Callan came. Callan, can you tell people how old you are? I'm nine years old. Isn't he sweet? Oh, he's just wonderful. <laughs> Did you enjoy doing this? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And so is this the first thing you've done like this? Uh, my second time. Second time. Have you been on TV before? Mm, haven't been on TV. Now you are. You're now a TV star. Okay. <laughs> you, you will be broadcast throughout the Northwest and in Canada, and you'll go in the library. So you're recorded for history. Do you like that? Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's great. Well, we're really pleased to have you here. Uh, Chris, you said that you spent some time, you know, collecting mm -hmm. the different people to do mm -hmm. this, and I think you just did a marvelous job. And uh, thank you very much. And we'll interview someone else here in a minute. Thank it was you, great Kelly. having you here. That yeah, was wonderful. Um, some of the other people that you've brought here, why don't we have them to come up to the mic? And sure. uh, if it's on this side, they can share the mic with me and over here. Um, Maybe we should start with Denise Clark. She okay. is just such a, a Come reader. Come on forward, and Denise. Well. <laughs> thank you so much for well, coming I'm, in. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm afraid that um, I thought my voice wasn't deep enough quite for... <laughs> well, Oscar's a young boy, so... <laughs> or, or excuse me, a young, young, a young boy dog. A young... <laughs> yeah. So, oh, thank but you. it was great fun, great Good. fun. Good. We appreciate that. Yes. <laughs> Denise, uh, as a librarian at North Idaho College, and you are just... Uh, remarkable in your background. I have known her for 16 or 17 years and I'm always going to the library and about a new book that's come in and every time I go Denise has either read the book or she has read a critique of the book or she's ordered it for the library and maybe this is a good time Christy for her to, to share with you in a conversation for a minute about uh, in this particular subject that we're doing today is the power of children's books. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Yes, a, a, a wonderful subject. Um, as a, a child, I was a great reader, and uh, I, I, I return to books I read as a child, as an adult. You know, I will go back and I'll read books like Alice in Wonderland oh, yeah. and Heidi and Little Women. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I get the same thrill out of them now that I did when I was a child. And, and I wondered yeah. if you ex kind of experienced the same thing. And Yeah, so definitely. That, mm -hmm. um, a lot of, I guess, always my goal with Woodville is to capture that innocence of when you were a young child. So you'll see there isn't, a, there isn't, no one will ever die or be injured severely in Woodville. They'll always be happy, but there will always be some kind of an adventure. So I, I do enjoy that too. Uh, Denise, I, and, and Christy will get a lot of credit for this in, in the other book she's writing. You indicated that as a child you read a lot, and I suppose that your family encouraged you to read. I guess my question is if you encourage children to read, and you have to you know, tap their imagination with something like children's book, Will they become lifelong readers if you start early? Um, yes, and I think one of the things that I always tell parents that they must do, they must model reading because children will often uh, look at their parents and watch what they're doing and model their um, uh, activities. And so I say if you want a child of yours to be a, a great reader, read yourself, and they will. 
the other question I have for both Christy and Denise, and that would be that um, in books like this, you know, the, they're age appropriate. You know, mm -hmm. At a certain age, children can't read yet. But isn't it wonderful to, uh, and it also creates a real good rapport between parents and the children, for the parents to read books like this to the children? Yeah, I think so. I, I oh, do. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I believe in reading to the child in the womb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. What we're doing with this show is not only we're going to be the air then, ladies and gentlemen, but we are uh, putting it in the library, and then Christy will have the access to the both audio and video, and you can take this with you as yeah. uh, you travel around, and and Oscar goes with you a lot. And, he does, yeah. yeah. And uh, he's been here before. He wasn't here today. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about what you do. Uh, I think you've done some charitable work uh, and some yeah. fundraising through this book and with Oscar. Yeah, we'd love to do community events. We've done a couple of fundraisers now. Um, just last weekend we did one for the Humane Society, um, Dog Days at the Fairgrounds, and Oscar and I were out there um, signing books. At least I was signing, he was sitting. And um, then I judged the uh, best costume contest, best wag, best bark. And it was a lot of fun. And then we did another charity for the animal shelter out in Post Falls last summer. and Just various events. Well, um, last time you were here, we talked about Oscar and Hannah, and, and uh, it's some kind of sad that Hannah doesn't get to go with you much like Oscar. Right, right. Does well, it? they're a handful together. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're, they're really in love in the book. Yes. <laughs> but in real life, they kind of want only my attention for each other. And so together, having them together is a little difficult out at a public event. So. We have several other people here that uh, did different roles, and would you like to call someone forward? I would we'll love to. My boss is going to have to probably leave pretty soon, so I'll grab him first. This is Chief Wayne Longo from Coeur d'Alene City Police. Uh, yeah, I've known Wayne a long, long time, and he's also taught uh, in criminal justice here at North Idaho College. Uh -huh. and, so, and he was with uh, State Police for years, and we're mm -hmm. delighted that you're Chief of Police in Coeur d'Alene. Go ahead, Christy. Well, I asked him, um, what, two weeks ago, mm -hmm. if he would be the GOAT. <laughs> and and uh, he didn't sure that. where we were going with that. <laughs> he <did. laughs> yeah, he put on his calendar goat, and um, and then he just we really have not rehearsed, we haven't really discussed it, and he just came here today ready, and um, really put a lot of action into the goat. So I appreciate that. Was that. Fun. It was well, great. I find it interesting we didn't rehearse any of this, and everybody just really and shined. Everybody did a great job. Why don't you share with us too? Because uh, I know on the TV station Spokane, in particular, they have. Uh, advertisement where they had get different personnels come on and, and, and you know push reading and all mm -hmm. and I know I know your family and uh, your your children and all they were just wonderful uh, and they were here at North Dakota College uh, give us your recommendation to parents and all about reading I couldn't agree with Denise more I can remember when my children before they were born we read to both of them in the womb and um, I look at how they've achieved right now one's graduated from college and my daughter a double major in physics and math. She's not my daughter. I don't know where she got those <laughs> brains from. But I, I truly believe it's about reading. I can remember coming home from work late at night, 1, 2 o'clock in the morning, and I'd hear this little muttering, and I'd look upstairs, my daughter's lighted beyond. She was reading, and my son did the same thing. Reading sets the stage for, I guess, for the rest of your life, and, and I can't emphasize it enough. And, and so much information learned. Uh, if you get so much into modern technology and, and attention span is very short, you don't read, it's, it's really limited. Absolutely. It just stays with you forever. It's yes. awesome. Christy's done a great job with this. Hasn't she, though? And Thank you. a lot of people will not only read the book, but they would also have access to this tape. And so yeah. they could, mm -hmm. uh, th so that even kids that can't read could uh, actually listen Follow to along. it. Follow along, absolutely. Yeah, and so it has an extra benefit. Absolutely. We thank you very well, much. Well, thank you for having us. Thank you, boss. Christy, who else would you like to talk to? Well, next? we'll just go in order here. I'll bring up Sweet Pea. <laughs> Pam Pratt. <laughs> Let me tell you about Sweet Pea. She existed. Um, she was just the most wonderful cow. And uh, she was actually my best friend's cow, and she followed us around like a little dog, but she just was so sweet. And so when I thought, who could be Sweet Pea? Well, Pam, my goodness, she's um, the epitome with all of the work in the elementary and her, her um, career devoted to education. She's fabulous for the role. So I was really... Thank you, Christy. Really I've just you. always wanted to be a cow. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in reincarnation. <laughs> Let me say a couple things about Pam also. Uh, she's a great, great friend, and she's been in the school district a long time, and she's been principal of several schools, and now she's in charge of coordinating the elementary programs. But the 
the neatest thing about Pam of all is her commitment to human rights. And of course, children's stories and knowledge <coughs> is showing kindness rather than violence. And Pam has been working with me for many, many years. In fact, for 23 years now, the school districts, Post Falls and Coeur d'Alene and North Idaho College and the Kootenai County Task Force on Human Relations uh, as a human rights group, we have worked together with the Martin Luther King program. And I would like for her to make a comment about that. It's been 23 years now, and as of this last year, we've had 27,000 fifth graders through the program. And oh, Pam right. makes it happen, and so, and that's about children too and reading. Mm -hmm. So why don't you comment on our discussion we're having here today about children and reading mm -hmm. and, and that special program. Well, you know, as I was listening to the book, um, I love to read to the children and tie it to character and tie it to human rights. And I thought, what would I do with this book? And I know exactly. I would have some rich conversation about, um, is it okay to judge people by the way they look and maybe the way they talk? And I'm thinking of the ogre sure. who everybody prejudged um, him as somebody dangerous and, and cruel and mean and they found out that he really had a kind heart and it didn't matter what you look like or what you sound like and so books like this can be tied to the character lessons human rights and and so I really appreciate your book and Thank we'll you. probably use it for that Thank you. I have to say um, I have um, a dear friend of mine, Margo, gave me t both copies um, of the book to as a gift to give to my um, grandson, Will, who lives in um, Alaska, and Christy took the time to sign it to him, so I can't wait to go up there and read those to him. Uh, because like Denise was saying, if um, the more we read to the, not I really agree with the modeling, but the more we read to our younger students, children before they can read, um, when they enter the school system, if they've had 2,000 hours of uh, books read to them, um, they become our best readers and learners. And we have students who come in with maybe from zero to 50 hours uh -huh. that we have so much catch up just because they haven't heard um, rich literature. So the earlier we can do that, you know, the better. Yes. One other thing while we have you up here, Pam, and that is that in the last years in particular, we bring someone in for a week that's a great advocate of human mm -hmm. rights and a great speaker, and they, this person visits the different schools. Uh, I think we have now is it in, in Post Falls, Carolina, something like 14 or 15 elementary schools. Um, gosh, do you know we're going to have um, another one in Post Falls, so it'll be 15 yeah. next year. And mm -hmm. as they go from school to school or, or, or assembly from several schools, they talk all week about this, and then they come to North Idaho College with this program share with us that has a relationship to this how th many of those speakers deal with uh, storytelling also mm -hmm. and that also is, excites young people to read or how they mm -hmm. uh, communicate it and address other people right in our last um, the, just this past year in January uh, we brought in um, Scott Rigsby who is the double amputee who um, uh, completed a uh, first double amputee to complete uh, an Iron Man, the World Iron Man um, in Hawaii. And um, it's very similar to what you've done, uh, Christy, is that he told his story just like you tell your story of growing up and the challenges and um, you did it through animals and he has done it through um, his own experiences and I said you need to write a book and yeah. he is at this point working on that That's and great. so I, I love it when people can share their life and lessons through <coughs> books. Well, thank you so much mm -hmm. Pam. This is Pam thank Pratt you. with the Coeur yeah. School District. Thanks Christy. Thanks Thank Tony. you. Christy go ahead. Appreciate it. I'd like to bring up my former Chief of Police Tom Cronin. I'm also a politician now. <laughs> Let's not talk about that. <laughs> I asked him to be Little Joe the Rabbit. Now, Little Joe is actually my little brother, and so I named uh, the rabbit after my little brother. And uh, he was great. He agreed right away. He didn't hadn't seen the script, but he, he agreed to do it. And so The only reason I agreed, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I was afraid she was giving me the skunk roll. I didn't want that. <laughs> yeah. But he was good. Mike Kennedy was, was really so good. good. Well, and so was Wayne Longo. I'm going, wait a minute, where did the acting school come from? <laughs> yeah. I thought we were all supposed to be just natural. These guys have gone acting school. <laughs> it was great. How did you enjoy this experience? And, and what I loved testimony it. would you give about reading for children? One of the things I like, I also read to my daughter when she was in the womb. Um, one of the great things I love about the book and about children's books is that it, um, it gets children um, using their imagination. Mm -hmm. You know what? We have video gamed this world 
and people don't know how to sit down and read and, and use their imagination. It was so cool. And um, when I became the police chief here, I started a reading program with the, mm -hmm. Christy was part of it, mm -hmm. that I wanted, um, the, we went to the grammar schools and, and I had the, the teachers pick out kids that were struggling. And what I wanted to show them was that the police officers are not just those guys in the squad car. We would sit down with the kids and read and actually make them read to us. It was a great experience. And I, 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 I still, I just came back from vacation. I read five books on vacation. Yeah, and, that's right. Being in law enforcement, both of you, uh, you, you were, had a lot of experience back east before you came here. If students get very interested in reading and going to school and they have focus and all, they're far less likely to turn to crime. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, it's part of the imagination. If you can give kids stuff to do, they want, they want to sit in front of that computer. They want to get involved. But if you uh, leave them idle time, um, it's just, you know, what's going to happen is going to happen. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right, you're welcome. Thank you, Tom. Christy, another one of the people that did a great job. Yes, my dear friend Dick Haugen, the voice of North Idaho. I called him a couple weeks ago and said, will you be Plummy the Rooster? And um, he said, well, what does the rooster do? <laughs> and, and I said, well, here's the script. Just figure it out. <laughs> so. so I was the rooster. Yeah, it was fun. I enjoyed it. Uh, what a great group of people getting together and, and one take. And it was fun. It was a good story, and I enjoyed being part of it. You're a good friend. Thank you. We'll, we'll let you also. We're doing testimonies to why children should read and all, and tell us about your experience. You know, it's it's kind of funny. Uh, growing up, uh, getting into to radio years ago, I used to uh, read the comic books, and I was also an old time radio fan. Uh, the Shadow, uh, the Green Hornet, and you could also listen to that on the radio and 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 read the children's books. And I, I found out early in my broadcast career. We used to read, and this is in college too, we used to read the children's books to get into character. Mm -hmm. and, and so it was just a, a situation where uh, I started reading early, I continued reading early, uh, I read to my children, uh, and it's, it's really refreshing. You know, they say, well, with the internet, reading books will become passe. Well, all you have to do is look at the new library downtown yeah. and to see that that is just not the case. Reading is so important because if, if you can't read, there's nothing that you can do in life. So uh, I enjoyed this role and I just had a, a great time. I, I don't know, Plummy the Rooster, that's kind of cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. Although I couldn't do the, the, uh, the French accent, a Norwegian doing French is not good. So <laughs> we gave it a shot, but uh, it was fun. Oh, you were great. You were. And I think we have one more guest. Yes, that, uh, come I'd to the like mic to over bring here. up Roger Tardini. Here comes the mic here. Roger um, helped me in a number of ways. Um, originally, I, in my second book, I, I wrote a little song. And I went over to see Roger because he's a pianist, and I said, Roger, I want to put this to music. And so he had me sing it into a little recorder, which was terrible, by the way. And uh, <laughs> I left it with him. And weeks later, I went over to his house, and he played the most beautiful music on the piano. And that was my song. Well, then he surprised me even further. He, he um, is from Australia. Okay. That's how Bogey the Cat's Australian. Yes. And um, he went back to Australia for six weeks. And I'll let you tell your story. Yeah. Yeah, we were fortunate uh, that they coincided with a, a visit we were uh, doing in Australia, uh, where I have kids living there, and um, uh, one, of, uh, one of my kids, my son actually, uh, is a, uh, a musician uh, at heart, although he's an engineer like me, uh, professionally, but he's never lost that touch for music. Uh, I think it runs pretty much in our blood you know, from my father down to me, to my son. And uh, I played it on his piano, and he said, uh, well, why don't we uh, try different things with it? And uh, um, he, he thought that perhaps guitar would sound better for a, a children's book, uh, particularly dealing with country scenes. Uh, so we, we tried that, and and then he asked me to to play the harp, the entree on the harp, and then uh, the sortie on the harp, you know, coming into the uh, the singing part of the song and coming out uh, on the harp, which uh, uh, it made me uh, 
And I go back to my childhood because that's when I used to play harp quite a bit before I could afford a piano. Yeah, so that's uh, how the music came together. Um, but I think that uh, it, it is a... Uh, I, I'm very happy with it, personally, because uh, I uh, tend to um, rate a piece of music by uh, the situation where you can remember that music after you, you turn off the music, if you can still remember that melody and it lingers on your ears, then you know it's a good piece of music. Uh, unfortunately, that's not the case nowadays. So, <laughs> <laughs> a little criticism of some yeah, of modern yeah. music. <laughs> but uh, uh, you know, I watch. Uh, I, I uh, warn everybody who uh, plays that. I say it's gonna, uh, it's gonna ring in your ear when you get right. up in the morning. First thing in the morning is gonna be there, and that's a sign that it's good. And uh, I love that. And I love to do it for Christie. Because um, I just cannot do enough for Christy. Oh, she is special. Isn't she? she is she very really special. Yeah. She is. I mean, the most what other person. woman? Uh, you know, when I was in Australia doing this part of having fun there, doing this music, she was on my roof shoveling the snow. <laughs> so that doesn't happen very often either. <laughs> well, I don't know. She is just a Renaissance person. I guess no. she does yeah. all yeah. kind of <laughs> things. <laughs> yeah, she's a very, very great person well, with too. great strength. Also, I would say that you remind me that uh, we've talked a lot about children and children's yes. books and yes. reading, but music is a really part of that too, and oh, yeah. children learn very early uh, musical tunes, yeah. and so Krista, you're combining these together, mm -hmm. and so yeah. I think we, on the first show, I think we did play a little of the music that you did, mm -hmm. and um, that that's a delight too. And. We're right now just out of time, but thank you very much for being yeah. with us. Thank, thank, you thank everyone much. else. I we had, it very much. We had this thank studio you. full of 16 people, and as we said, we didn't rehearse anything. Yeah. And uh, yeah. But Christy had worked it out to where everybody had the entire script, and when you came in to say your part, and I thought it was extremely powerful, and I'm glad we decided to do thank this. Thank you and very much for doing it'll this. It'll be a two-week program for us that's very, very good. And Christy, good luck on your other books. And uh, Thank you. I guess we just have enough time, but where can they get your book? At Hastings and Borders, and then of course at Pedal Pushers, um, where Woodville Corner is now. And so if they're out of the out of this area, they could still get a hold of Hastings in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, or yeah, Borders, Borders in Coeur d'Alene, yeah. and they would be able to get a book Or from they them. could go to the website, yep. which is www.woodvillebooks.com. Okay, great. On that note, we have to bring the permanent conclusion. On behalf of all of you who performed today and our wonderful staff who put this together, we thank you and please be with us again next week. Until then, have a good week. I am Tony Stewart. Recorded on the campus of North Idaho College, Public Forum is the longest running in-house college production on PBS. Each episode is pre-recorded live and is an educational outreach from North Idaho College. Please join us at this same time next week for another edition of Public Forum on this public television station.